Hello, welcome to this very special edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace, reporting live here at this year's 2012 Detroit Jazz Festival here in downtown Detroit. Tonight here on the Pace Report, you're going to witness new music from saxophonist Tia Fuller, whose new album, Angelic Warrior, is about to be released on the Mac Avenue Records imprint. And this CD is really cool, and it's a little funky and edgier one because she and Floyd and is accompanied by the legendary Terry Lynn Carrington on drums and electric bassist John Patitucci. Tonight we sat down and talked about the brand new record. We also talked about her very busy year accompanying and also being assistant music director for Esperanza Spalding, as well as talking about how she continues to play and keep the chemistry going between playing with her sister and her brother-in-law live on stage in her band. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds and the new music from Tia Fuller's brand new Mac Avenue's record release, Angelic Warrior, here at the year's 2012 Detroit Jazz Festival here in downtown Detroit. First of all, Tia, welcome to the Detroit Jazz Festival. Congratulations on your third Mac Avenue's record release, Angelic Warrior. And it seems like there's a premise to this record, The Angel. And yes. it's kind of like a very spiritual connection to this. Explain. Yes, um, definitely a spiritual connection. At the time I was writing for the album, uh, I was really trying to balance the two aspects of angel and warrior, meaning um, angelic, trying to remain peaceful, um, sound in my decisions, um, to be graceful, 
but in the midst of that, continuing to uh, be very determined, um, decisive, and also aggressive in my approach toward what I was trying to get done. And so I think, and also having a level of discernment, like knowing when to move, knowing when not to move. And um, I think in every aspect of life, or especially for me, just really trying to maintain that balance of angel and warrior so that, um, I mean, we can all remain balanced in every situation, whether it be an adverse situation or whether it be something positive even, just being very content in both sides of that. This album is very different and one that you've incorporated the electric bass, which is played by John Patitucci, as well as a friend of yours, Terry Lynn Carrington. She did some arrangements on this album. Yeah, she did. Um, well, I actually came to know John Patitucci through Terry Lynn, and then also Diane Reeves is another special guest singing Body and Soul. Um, and and I, Diane and I are from the same hometown, Aurora, Colorado, or Denver, Colorado, but. Um, I really got a chance to work with her closely, and that was also through Terry Lynn. So she was definitely the major liaison, and um, she contributed. Terry Lynn contributed so much, just as far as her creativity is just amazing, and the fact that um, the the insight that she has on the music, and then her arrangements are always very insightful, even with her own music. So I knew that bringing her into the picture and um, not only having her play musically, but also arrange a couple of compositions would add a lot of flavor. And then on top of that, um, she's suggesting both Diane and John Patitucci um, really added a, a nice texture and flavor to the album. And it's, I couldn't have imagined it better in my head. Tell me how you decided to have Diane Reeves sing on that track because, again, it's another personal song. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's funny because I realize everything's an evolution. And initially, I wrote I wrote lyrics for um, an original that's on the album called "Core of Me," and I heard Diane singing on that one. I wrote her that specifically for her. But then after, actually, Terry Lynn had made this suggestion. She was like, "Well, see which one Diane wants to sing. Send send her the Core of Me, and then also send her Body and Soul, your version of Body and Soul." And I sent her both. And she was like, I think I want to sing Body and Soul. And so I just let it evolve naturally. And um, so that's pretty much how, how that came about. She was supposed to sing Core of Me, the, link, the lyrics of Core of Me. But then um, when she heard Body and Soul, it was like, I think that spoke more to her. And I think as musicians, generally, you want something to speak to you so that you can serve as that vessel. vessel. And... Um, and her rendition of Body and Soul is, is miraculous. <laughs> you know, you've also matured in a lot of ways on this album that you've gone from a companist, composer, and leader to now producing your own album. How does that feel? It feels amazing. I've uh, learned a lot just about production, and I'm learning a lot. Uh, I need to learn way more. <laughs> But just as far as um, editing and mas the mastering process and um, how to be, how to pay attention to the minutia. And uh, that's also something Terry Lynn has uh, been very instrumental in just because she produces her own albums. So it's, it's been really great just between the production, um, performing as an instrumentalist, and then writing. I think the stronger that each of those get, the stronger everything else is. And so everything else really strengthens each other. And it's just a matter of keeping a balance between the three.
tremendous two years. In addition to you playing with Beyonce, you've now the assistant music director for Esperanza Spalding, and you've also been a part of Terry Lynn Carrington's Grammy Award winning project, The Mosaic Project. What is it right now that you're learning from both of them? Because both you and Esperanza are kind of like back and back as far as recording projects and came out around the same yeah. time. Mm -hmm. And Terry, being a veteran pro that yeah. she is, mm -hmm. she's coming from a whole nother angle. Yes. Well, it's funny because um, there, there's equally about 10 years between all three of us. <laughs> and Terry Lynn, um, she's definitely like the mentor of the two of myself and then Esperanza. But I would have to say that having toured with Esperanza, she too is a mentor to me, and she's she's a great representation of uh, where the music can go and um, the different aspects and different venues that the music can be in. Because she's constantly, along with Terry Lynn, of course, um, constantly pushing the envelope and um, the the point of creativity, and she's extremely, extremely. Um, She's extremely on top of everything that she does, very, very intelligent. And so with the two of them, it's funny because a lot of times all three of us will hang out and <clears throat> when the two of them start talking, it's just like extremely intense. And then I think I kind of break the energy up a little bit with a, a looseness or a laughter. <laughs> but um, I think we all really en enhance one another in a very beautiful way. And the stars have been aligned and we've all been blessed enough to be able to be a part of each other's musical direction at this point. And um, so hopefully, actually, we've been uh, working on getting Esperanza on a couple of my shows because she's expressed an interest playing the electric bass part. And then um, Terry Lynn, we've also been talking about doing some other stuff like trio. So I, I think I really am excited about uh, what's to hold between the three of us. <laughs> Thank you. 
beautiful thing about what you're continuing to do, there is that family in your system and in your music. Your sister and your brother-in-law are really kind of your anchors. And um, I just want to know how this continues to work because I know your sister has been in your corner. You guys used to fight a lot. I bet you guys, there's a lot of bad blood and good blood oh, at the same time. No, actually, we didn't fight a lot at all. The only fight that we actually had was over some baklava. That <laughs> A dessert. <laughs> but that literally was the only fight that we had. I remember once she said we slept in the same bed together and one night she was like, Tia, because I always wanted to sleep with my big sister as a little sister. She's like, Tia, if you sleep with me and if you kick me, I'm gonna kick you out of the bed. And surely enough, midway at night I was on the floor. <laughs> but other than that, we've always had a very healthy and beautiful relationship and um She's, she's been a role model in a lot of ways in my life and um, I just, it's, I'm truly elated to be able to play with her on, and tour with her and, and it's funny because as you get older it seems like the years get closer and uh, so we've gotten closer. I mean not that we weren't close already but we've definitely just gotten closer and having my parents around, uh, it's, it's all very, very beautiful and I'm, I'm just really, really blessed. She is a dynamic pianist, and, and Rudy, I've been seeing him back quite a few names here in jazz yeah. over the last couple of years, and he's really been doing this thing too as a drummer. What is it about him as a drummer that you just, that adds to your music? Oh man, you know what, I'd have to say that the connection that I have with drums is probably the most important on stage, especially for playing my originals, um, because I'd have to say it's Terry on Gully's fault. Um, <laughs> when I first started playing, like sitting in at different jazz clubs in Atlanta while I was at Spelman College, um, Terry on was always the drummer. He kind of set the standard for me, and um, he was always the drummer I listened to and um, and just kind of I was reared in. And so, and of course Rudy because we were playing when I first started playing the saxophone as well. But yeah, Rudy is a uh, he's definitely. He's an active drummer, and I, I, love, I love the element of rhythm, and um, I think I'm kind of a percussive uh, or a rhythmic saxophonist, and um, I always have to have a great interaction between myself and the drummer, and Rudy, definitely, he spoils me. <laughs> he definitely spoils me, so, <laughs> yeah, I, I like a lot of drums. I like a lot, and... Maybe I, the older I get, I'll grow out of it, but maybe not. <laughs> so. Well, Terion is a bad, bad role model for you. I mean, uh, he's. I mean, just looking at what he's done in the last decade has been ridiculous oh, too. Yeah, yeah, Terion. He. I mean, I know he's played with David Sanborn. He always plays with Diane Reeves. He's been playing with her for at least fifteen years, I think. And um, yeah, so dr it's all about drums for me. It, it is, and um, it's funny because in in the new album, Angelic Warrior, I am um, I wanted to celebrate that, and the last track is Cherokee. Not only do I have two drummers, it's Rudy and Terry Lynn, but I also have a drum track playing. So it's it's a lot of drums, and I love it. Everybody in the studio at the time, the my producer and um, I mean uh, the A and R person, um, uh, Al Al Pryor. And then my manager, they were just all kind of sitting there with their eyes wide open like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Because there's a whole bunch of stuff happening. But I love it. <laughs>
What does jazz music mean to you? Jazz music to me means a reflection of life and of freedom, of spontaneity, and of being able to share love and uplift the spirits of not only musicians, but of the listeners. That's what jazz music means to me. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at this year's 2012 Detroit Jazz Festival here in downtown Detroit. I'd like to personally thank Sister Tia Fuller for her time, as well as the festival organizers for this year's 2012 Detroit Jazz Festival. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Till next time, peace.